I was, I don't want to give you like a life story, but kind of a background as to what I'm calling about is like, I was raised Baptist. Um, I'm originally from Florida, so I was raised Baptist. I don't know if that has a correlation, but anyway, um, raised Baptist, uh, went to a Baptist high school, graduated from that, or not a Baptist high school, Christian high school, um, uh, was involved in youth, youth worship, you know, led the music ministry and things like that. And, uh, for a long time, I, I was just really heavily indoctrinated, um, into that faith. And, uh, there was a time period where I was just, I was really wanting, I was just always so hungry for that physical manifestation that you guys say, you know, it's definitely a necessity. And I agree. And one of the things, uh, one of the things that I love about your show is that you get people thinking, you get, you, you know, I think skepticism is a necessity and, and, um, and I definitely want to want to question everything. So I mean, I count I count myself as an agnostic today. Um, the only reason that I that I can't fully claim uh, to be an atheist is because of the experience I had. Um, so I was was about eighteen at the time, and I was asking constantly asking for some kind of manifestation. You know, whether it was seeing seeing demons, seeing angels, seeing anything or feeling it, you know, something like that, something beyond the, the, the traditional story that you hear about, oh, I had a feeling. It's just, you know, it's, I feel it. It's just not, a, it, it wasn't good enough for me. And I don't think it's good enough for a lot of people, but neither here nor there. Anyway, so I go to this, um, I went to this, they had a bi-weekly, or not bi uh, they had Tuesdays and Thursday nights at this school, ca at my school's cafeteria. They would have a, a homeless uh, soup kitchen, you know, feeding line, and uh, participated in that. Um, it was run by another, like, I think, like, an independent pastor that organized that. And um, I came to that event with a friend of mine, and he met me. I talked to him very briefly. And he, he had already asked, like, you know, you're here looking for something. And so that kind of sent a red flag in my head initially. And then he was like, hang on. And I'm, I'm in the same cafeteria I had eaten lunch in for years. So I know there's no, you know, no booby traps anywhere. There's no weird stuff going on. But, like, he brings these two women over, and um, they're both at about a 40 five degree angle on both sides of me in front of me nobody lays a finger on me nobody's got any hands on me or anything and they just put their hands up over me and they're praying in tongues and they're praying a gift the gift to come over me i had i had a sensation from coming up from the bottom of my feet and it, by the time i realized that I, and i looked down and it reaches my my ankles my knees it's climbing and it, it, the closest thing I could describe it to is if you lay on on a limb for too long and you don't have any blood in it, it feels like, you know, you, sure. you know what I mean? It feels like it's at a picnic. So um, when I feel that hit my knees, I drop to the floor and and it covers my entire body from head to toe. And this is, and, and I'm telling you this not because I want to reinforce other people's false beliefs without evidence. I'm, I'm bringing this to you guys because this was a physical, this was what I was asking for. This was a physical happening. And um, it was, okay, so the experience that was covering me from head to toe, it was like warmth and, and electricity. And I had a, I was crying my, my eyes out. I had a puddle of tears in front of me. And again, I'm sitting in, in the cafeteria I'd been to for years. There's, there's no wires. I'm not, nobody's touching me. Nothing's happening. Like, but I feel this. It's real. And it feels like raw power, just unreal power. And I can see like a glow around my hands. I look at my hands while I'm on, on the ground. And I see this glow around my hand. And as soon as, as soon as I, I have the feeling, I'm just like, God, I just, I, I really want to stay here. I just don't want to be anywhere else. Um, you know, it was just, it slowly just crept back off from the top of my head down 
out of my feet. And um, so after that, you know, I was just in dis. I was, ironically enough, I was in disbelief, and um, I just couldn't believe how real that experience was. And uh, after so, that, had a- Adam, fell- Adam, yes, sir. So you had some experience, an experience that was something along the lines of what you had been seeking. What is the explanation for that experience? That's that's the question. Um, because I'm not, cl- I don't want to make the claim that I know what did that, and I don't want to make the claim and that is, is it possible? It the- is it possible that nothing outside of you did that? Yes, yeah, it absolutely is possible. Okay, is it possible that some god did it? Yes, it is possible. How do you know that's possible? Um. I mean, we know it's possible that this was a manifestation of your brain because of scientific investigations, dating back even to extraordinary popular delusions and the madness of crowds, which investigated um, phenomena that people uh, think is supernatural and yet has natural explanations that, you know, we feel things and experience things. So we know that our brain can influence stuff. But do we have any reason to think that it's possible that a god did it? I mean, when we say it's possible that your brain constructed this, it's because we have evidence of brains constructing this. When you say it's also possible that a god did it, what evidence do you have that it is possible for a god to do anything? Um, I would say that I would say that because I've never. I've never had another physical or manif- or really physical experience like that ever again. Even even afterwards, I didn't immediately fall out of. Okay, but, but that has nothing but, to do with the cause. Saying you haven't had this experience again doesn't answer the question of what makes you think it's possible that a god did it. What makes me think that it's possible that a god did it? Um, Honestly, uh, is it possible that a Bigfoot did it? <laughs> um, no, no. Okay, so you you don't because think because we don't have evidence of Bigfoot? Sure. So, why do you think it's possible that a god did it? I'd have to uh, I'd have to agree with you. I honestly, uh, there's no proof that a god did do it, so I can't. Well, why do I think it's possible? That could be because of. The early indoctrination, maybe it just it's a natural sure. reaction to sure, we attribute can, that to... But now we're asking a different question. Now we're asking why you might be convinced, even absent of evidence, instead of why should you be convinced. Now, none of this gets to saying that a god didn't do it. You had some experience, maybe a god did it. But the time to believe that it was actually from a god is when you have evidence for that, not just saying, well, it seems possible to me, Um, And I also know it's possible for my brain to have done this, but I'm going to go with the God explanation. So you you are literally going for the explanation that you don't have evidence for its possibility over the explanation for which you do have evidence of possibility. I see. But but here's the thing, though. I'm not... I think that 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 making making the statement that something is possible isn't making the claim that it that it was that cause, is it? So no, just, no, no, no. I by- no. It's you. You could say it's possible that it's Bigfoot, but I don't think Bigfoot did it. it, it yeah, you're correct. Though we're not making that. I'm just saying, in order for you to say, here's an here's here's an effect, here's an event, and mm-hmm. I want to find out what the best explanation for that event is. If you have several possible, demonstrably possible explanations, and one for which there's no demonstration that this is even possible, that Bigfoot did it, then believing that Bigfoot did it over the possible explanations is certainly irrational. Doesn't mean you're wrong, but it's irrational. If you expand that to go to you know a, a god or whatever else, um, you have to actually give a justification for why, uh, of the possible explanations, we would seek through possible explanations to find the one that's most plausible and most probable. 
But you're setting all of that aside and just saying, I'm going for one that I can't even demonstrate is possible. And that's, what, that's the only thing I have a problem with. It's, it's not that you're wrong. Uh, it's not that you are actually incorrect. It is that you are erroneous in your methodology. Well, I, I kind of, I kind of see it back to what you mentioned, like how uh, I think somebody mentioned, like water below one of the moons of Neptune, or I think the, the yeah, diamond so, uh, underneath. Yeah, Neptune. Phil was talking about that. Yeah, yeah and underneath Europa. So you accept that as a possibility that there's, let's say, there's plutonium under the crust of Neptune. You accept that as a possibility, but you have no proof for the claim, and you acknowledge that, but you're not making the claim that there is. But you do accept that as a possibility, right? Without evidence. Well, that, still we have evidence that it's possible. Right, we have evidence that um, plutonium does indeed exist. We've measured it. It's on our periodic table. We've um, found it in other rocks that we have in space, things that are so. So we know that it is a possibility based on the past evidence that we have gathered over time. Um, I see. Versus okay. what you would say, because you, you said that you were, if I'm not mistaken, you said that you were agnostic, um, but that you wouldn't adopt the atheist label because you didn't have an explanation for this experience that you had, correct? Yeah, essentially. So currently, do you have a belief that a deity exists right now or not? Um, I'd say that I... I haven't decided that. I'd say okay. that I am in pursuit of proof. Okay. Well, you, you, you are either convinced... Are you convinced that a God exists? No. Then you're an atheist. Know. You're an atheist under the, <laughs> under the most common weak definition, which is anybody who does not believe that a God exists. Sure. That atheist doesn't require that you believe that no gods exist. It just requires that you are not convinced that any God exists. But I don't care about the label. I did, I did a video about the label. You can call yourself whatever you want. What I care about is rational methodologies for reaching decisions. And if you have this experience, it's worth noting that while nobody has had the exact experience you had because it's unique to you, there are similar experiences that happen in various different religious traditions um, that have nothing to do with it, that are mutually exclusive. So let's say that there's an event, a, a feeling that someone has of warmth that begins at their feet and, and the overwhelming love. Um, we know that this type of experience can be achieved in many different religions that aren't compatible and that in things that aren't, don't have anything to do with religion. And the examples that I've used before are I have felt uh, incredible, uh, emotional, emotionally overwhelmed at art, mm -hmm. at music, um, w these experiences from, you know, sex, drugs, and rock and roll, uh, yeah. as, as bad as, as people want to try to make that out to be, uh, I don't consider them vastly different from the euphoric experiences that people experience, that have, mm -hmm. people have while they're worshiping. Um, it's a different, mm -hmm. it's not exactly the same, but they're along the same lines. There's a reason why yeah. people like to get drunk and people like to get high. It feels good. It gives them an experience. And I'll, and I'll tell you this. Just sorry to cut you off. But, no, you're fine. Um, I'll, I'll tell you this though. I, you know, that was when I was 18, and since then I have done a lot of experimentation. Not with you know crazy things. I'm not an addict of any of any kind. Never have been. But I've tried LSD. I've tried mushrooms, that kind of thing. Visual, whatever. Um, I. And I still honestly couldn't, I, I couldn't tell you that it was as profound an experience as that. And that's, again, me not making the claim. Just no, no, no. I'm not. So the intensity of an experience is separate from, like, the quality of it. And both of those are separate from what the explanation for the experience is. Because, for example, let's say you did an, uh, a hallucinogenic drug. You yeah. knew that at 5 o'clock in the evening you took your hallucinogenic drug and at 7 o'clock, you saw a strawberry with a face and a cape flying around the room. All right. How do you know that it's because of the drugs? Ooh, how do I know? Well, because I just took them. Ah. Because what else could it... But that, that's the post hoc ergo propter hoc fall fallacy of after this, therefore because of it. It's, it's likely, I would agree, that it is likely because you took a hallucinogenic drug, that you then experienced a hallucination. 
But can you draw a proper causal link to say that that drug is the reason I saw Super Strawberry flying around? On my own, I probably could not. If I were hooked up to proper equipment that were measuring my, maybe scanning my brain activity, possibly. Exactly. Yeah. It's independent confirmation that allows us to reach the most accurate explanations for the world. Because at any given moment, I, I was talking to Beth the other day. I, I, I really don't even want to say this on the show, but because I was going to save it for another time. Have you ever have you ever had one of those moments where you really desperately wished you could go back in time and change something? Of course, everybody has. How do you know you haven't? How do I know that I haven't gone back and actually changed it? No, not that specific one. How do you know that you haven't actually gone back in time? Maybe you had three wishes. Maybe you had 50 wishes. Maybe you had a million wishes, and you've used them up. You've actually gone back in time, each one of those instances, to that and made a different decision. How do you know that hasn't happened? Um, I'd say that it's only based, it's like you said, it's based on our own individual recollection. It is, of, it is what is called an unfalsifiable proposition. There's no way to prove that that's not the case, which is why when we come up with a null hypothesis, the null hypothesis is always unfalsifiable or should be. Mm. And, and so that's um, what you're trying to disprove. I see. So, and, and let me make one other side note to kind of support what you're saying as well about it, about the possibility of it being produced by my own mind. Um, the only other, the only other time that I've even come close to that experience was the one successful, um, in self-induced lucid dream that I had had. Mm -hmm. I was actually laying in flat in bed and I had started feeling that same engrossing feeling coming out from just behind me instead of below me. But it wasn't as, it's like, you know, it wasn't as intense, but it was, I did have a self-induced lucid dream. I don't know where you guys sit on lucid dreaming or anything. But. Actually, you probably want to call in on a week when Tracy's here because Tracy oh, yeah. is the, uh, well, at least the atheist experience is foremost expert on lucid dreaming. Okay. But anyway, okay. Uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sweat it. Basically the nutshell of this entire conversation is you had an experience you can't explain. And this seems to be preventing you from saying, Oh, there's absolutely no God, and none of that matters. If you're not convinced that a God exists, you're an atheist. But you don't have to use that label. You can use whatever label you want. At the end of the day, do you think you have an explanation for what happened to you? And the answer seems to be no. And oh, no. guess what? There's tons of things that, we, that happen that we don't have an explanation for. The only mistake is in thinking that you have an explanation when you don't. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely didn't want to come across as having an explanation. I was just... No, was you're, just you're saying, fine. Like, yeah. And, and most, of, most of what you're doing methodologically is fine, too, because when I say, how do you know that it's possible that a God exists, after a moment's thought, you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm, I'm saying something's possible when I haven't demonstrated it. When many other people would say, well, how do you know it's not possible? You, you are not suffering from those flaws in thinking. You may have others. We all have errors in the way we think. Uh, but there, there's nothing, I don't find anything to be concerned about. You had an experience, you don't have an explanation for it, maybe someday you will, maybe you won't. Maybe it's God, maybe it's not. But the time to believe it's God is after we have good reason to think it is. And you can accept that possibility as well, right? Well, I didn't, I'm not accepting a, the possibility that God exists, I'm accepting that, that it is not impossible, it has not been demonstrated to be impossible. Uh, Sorry, I had to, it I may, a little cheap. Yeah, it may in fact be impossible. I don't know whether it is possible or impossible. Understood. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to the pursuit we all have here and finding those answers. And I really appreciate what you guys do, putting questions in people's heads. And thank you for the time speaking with me today. Hopefully I'll call you guys again sometime soon. Um, can I ask you just one closing question real quick? What is your, what's, your, what's going to be like for this call, for me personally, what's your best advice moving forward looking for those, those rational explanations? The best advice, uh, looking forward. Um, well, the first one you kind of, I think you already kind of uh, have a beat on is being honest with yourself that actually acknowledging that you don't know what caused that experience. You say that you experienced it, but you don't know that cause. But uh, I would say be honest with yourself uh, going forward and be honest in the approach of how you're looking uh, for answers. If you 
start looking for a conclusion saying that, oh, well, it, you know, it possibly might be a God. And so that starts leading you down the path of looking for specific things that may validate um, that one perspective that may uh, muddle the truth of what happened even. And it's also uh, accepting the possibility that you may never find out what actually led to that uh, experience uh, that you had on that side. Yeah. Keep, so, keep asking so questions. Good, sure. Keep asking questions and try to get comfortable with saying, I don't know, because that's going to be the answer quite often. Yeah, but don't let it get to you if you never find out. Yeah. Still yeah. live. Yeah. Thanks, Adam. Right. Thanks a lot, guys. No okay. problem. It, it is our discomfort with I don't know yeah. that drives us to act or pretend as if we do know. It's very, something weird happened. I don't know what it was. It, it, would, it would be comforting to think, oh, that was a God making me feel this way, rather than sitting around going, what was that? Is there something wrong with my brain? That's a potentially terrifying thought, that there's something fundamentally wrong with your brain, and it's just screwing with you. Uh, and maybe, maybe there's a tumor, and you're about to die. And some people want to know, some people don't want to know. All of that is potentially terrifying, and yet if you just say, ah, it happened in this religious context. Clearly, that was a God mm. trying to make me feel warm and fuzzy, and it worked. And now, you have gotten rid of the discomfort of, of saying you don't know. And you've gotten rid of all the potentially negative scenarios because you've spun it in a positive way. But you have no idea whether or not you're right. And so you're taking comfort over truth. Sometimes the truth is, we don't know. I remember having a few experiences here and there, and um, um, it was usually dealing with music in church. Like that was mm -hmm. usually where I found uh, those experiences where you know I, I understood that you know people get the spirit. You know we were told about that uh, that you know you kind of lose control of yourself, or you know you you're just filled with the Holy Spirit, and it's supposed to make you feel X Y Z. Because we had plenty plenty of people that would testify oh. uh, about that type of thing. But I remember after the fact, this was uh, while I was. Uh, identifying as spiritual but uh, not religious, that type of thing. Right, but in college, I was listening to a song for um, the first time. I'm trying to—I was trying to uh, bring it up on my phone to remember the name of it. Um, but it was like a seven-string guitar that he was playing, and it was just incredible. Like I, I love music. I love and adore uh, music like that. And I remember when he got to like the climax of the song, right after the bridge, and it was just incredible the way it sounded. I still remember it now, but I remember tearing up. And like just like breaking down, I was like sitting on the couch and I was just like gone. I was just like, this is in, an incredible feeling. He's amazing. Like it was just an and amazing. These, these are things that we yeah. have good information about. You know, songs played in minor keys. Oh, yeah. They're sad. Yeah. They make when good songwriters understand this. Dan Barker can actually talk about it quite a bit as, it's a, in its as chords. a pianist. But yeah, uh, what, what you're doing, uh, if. There had never been a song in the entire history of the human being. And somebody played a song right now, you would think it was magic. Uh, the, the song that you have the biggest emotional response to, if it had it, 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 it risen in a vacuum where there was no other song and you heard that song, you would identify it as magic. It, there was, there's no explanation for this. But instead, what we have is thousands and thousands of years of human beings trying to make better and better music. And what do they do? Well, let me play this. Everybody frowned. What do I, let me play this. Everybody smiled. Let me what, play this. Oh, that person's getting weepy. Oh, those people. This is how we learn stuff. We react to music. It's not magic. It's the way our brains are.